Hello and welcome to part 52 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video I'll be talking about 10 essential camera tips that you can use if you're about to render out your first animated movie from Blender. Let's go ahead and dive in. Camera tip number one, emulating numpad to make your number row act like your number pad. Let's say you've just spent a lot of time creating a 3D scene or an animation and you need to now set up your camera. You're going to need to be able to easily access your camera, and if you have an elongated keyboard with a number pad on the right hand side, you know that you can press the zero key, I'm going to click on my splash screen to get rid of it, you can press the zero key to quickly access your camera. You can press the zero key again to access just your normal user perspective view. You can press the one key to access your front, your three key to access your right, and your seven key to access your top. But if you have a laptop, most laptops don't have a number pad, so how do you access this feature? The number row, by default, doesn't allow you to use these number pad features, but Blender's user preferences does allow you to switch so that your number row can have these features. Let's go ahead and go up to the file menu and go to user preference under the input tab. The first tab is interface. If you switch over to input, there is a checkbox called emulate numpad. If you check this checkbox and then click on save user settings and then close your preferences window, you can now use your number row just like your number pad. And so if you press the number zero on your number row, you can easily switch to or out of your camera view. So that's an essential camera tip to quickly switch to your camera. Otherwise, you might find yourself having to actually select your camera and then go down to the view menu and go to camera, which takes longer. Camera tip number two, render size. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly press zero on my numpad to go through my camera's view, and I'm ready to render, or am I? By default, Blender's render size, that means the number of pixels, wide and tall, that you're rendering your picture out to, or your video picture out to, is at 1080p, but it's at half scale. How do I know this? Well, over on the right hand side of your screen in your properties window, if I make it a little bit wider, I'm looking under my camera tab right now, that's the render tab. Down here under dimensions, I can see that my resolution on the X, which is left and right, and Y, which is up and down, is 1920 by 1080, which is commonly known as 1080p, which is the resolution of most high def or full 1080p televisions. Although, by default, Blender sets this resolution or cuts this resolution in half. In other words, it's scaled down to 50%. That's what this slider is for. Right now, if I go ahead and press render, it's not going to render at out 1080p. It's going to cut that in half in both dimensions. In other words, it's half of 1920 wide and half of 1080 tall, which means it's actually a quarter of the original size. If I want to change that, of course, I can press escape and I'll just scroll this up or drag this up to 100%. And now if I press the render button, it'll render at full 1080p. I can change this though, and you will recognize that when I start playing with these values, my camera will actually change. If I change both values to 1000 by 1000, you'll see that my camera is no longer widescreen. It actually reflects that in the 3D scene. The viewport is now square because it's a thousand by a thousand. And actually looking at the camera, I'll press zero to break out of the camera view. The camera actually has changed appearance and now looks square uh, on its front surface. So you can actually see that. If I want to change to 4K, which is a new high resolution, which is actually not under these list of render presets, um, I can type the numbers and I'll put them on the screen right now. It's 3840, 3840. Uh, that's wide on the x-axis, and tall, it's 2160, or 2160, and that's the native 4K resolution for most 4K displays and for YouTube. Camera tip number three, focal length. In other words, do you want to render your scene with a camera that has a wide-angle lens or a zoom lens? In order to accomplish this, I need to select my camera and go up to the properties window to the camera tab, which is only available when you select your camera. And up here under the lens section, you can adjust your lens's focal length. If you use an SLR digital camera or an SLR camera or a more high-end video camera, you'll know that you can change lenses on the camera in order to get a different effect, a different field of view. I'm gonna demonstrate that by going through my camera's view. I'll press zero on my numpad. And as you can see, I have a simple scene set up here with two cubes in my otherwise empty scene. If I break out of my camera for a moment, you'll see that the cubes are quite spaced apart. 
and by default, and I'll select my camera by just right clicking on the edge, the focal length of this lens is 35 millimeters. That means I can see what I can see the lens right now, but if I click in this area and drag down, you can start to see that I can see more of my scene the lens becomes wider, so if I had more things on the left, right, top, and bottom, I'd be able to see that. If you're shooting, let's say, a small room, and you have to shoot a lot of things in that small room, let's say you're shooting a movie, and you have lots of things going on, you probably use a wide-angle camera lens in order to see everything in the room. Likewise, if you were shooting animals on a safari at a long distance, you might use a camera lens with a very high focal length, a very long lens with a very long zoom, and that might be something like even a 300 millimeter zoom, which means you're very much zoomed in. So you can change these things and they have an effect on how your scene actually looks. It's called horizontal compression. If I quickly go out of my camera lens, you'll see that my camera is now very long, it's 300 millimeters long. And now what I can do is I can zoom out, or in other words, dolly the camera back, and I'll press zero again, and you can see that the, the cubes, if I were to adjust the camera, the cubes look quite similar in size. Alternatively, if I change the camera, and I'm gonna zoom out so I can see it and select it, if I change that to about 15 millimeters and zoomed way, way in, and press zero, you can see that the cubes look very, very different. So it has an effect on the compression and the scale of objects relative to one another in a scene. So that's how you adjust the focal length of your camera. It'll let you see more or less of a scene and it'll effect on the size of elements compared to one another. Camera tip number four, the dolly zoom or Hitchcock zoom. This seldom used tool in filmmaking is an in-camera effect in which you zoom out or zoom in at the same time that you're dollying the camera towards or away from a subject that you're filming. The resulting effect is an uneasy effect that's done naturally, it's in camera, that makes the background behind a character change while the foreground character, usually a character, uh, stays exactly the same. We're going to demonstrate this inside of Blender, and this is going to require a little bit of animation, by animating the camera both dollying, in other words moving in and out, while changing its focal length um, in an animated fashion. Let's go ahead and try this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on animation in my timeline. I have a monkey head, which is going to be my subject. I have a, a bunch of cones uh, laid out kind of like um, bowling pins. And I'm going to select my camera and turn on animation. And I'm going to actually split my view in two. So I'll grab this little cross hatch area up here and drag it to the left because I want to see one view from the camera and one view just from a user perspective. So I'll close in this window with my mouse and I'll press zero to look through my camera. Right now it's a fairly wide angle lens. I'm actually going to change it to be a little bit wider. So what I'll do is with the camera selected, I'll go to my camera tab in the properties window and I'll change my focal length to about 17. Now, if I want to animate this value, what I have to do is put my mouse inside of there and press I, and that will insert a keyframe. I'm at frame zero right now on my timeline, that's important. So I'll put my mouse in this and press I, and that will turn it yellow, and it'll make a keyframe at that frame. Um, let's go ahead and move over to uh, frame 100, and I'm gonna change the focal length here to something much higher. I'm going to click in it and I'm going to type 150, actually I'll type 200 and I'll press enter. As you can see, I've really, really zoomed in. What I need to do also is put my mouse over here and press I again. I'm not sure if that's necessary. No, it wasn't. At this point, I'm going to go back to my first frame because as you can see, it's changing a whole lot, but it's only animating the zoom. And you can see it actually changing down here. If I zoom in and then I play it or scrub through, you can see that happening. I'm gonna go back to frame zero and I'm gonna move this camera up to where I have the monkey head taking up most of the frame. So I still have animate turned on down here. I'm gonna drag the camera forward on the Y axis so that's filling most of the frame. And as you can see, the cones in the background get quite uh, small as they get farther away. Okay, let's go ahead and move up to frame 100. I have a keyframe of the camera in this position at focal length 17. Let's go all the way up to frame 100 and let's move that camera way, way back. So I'm gonna drag it way, way back and I might need to adjust that a little bit because the camera wasn't perfectly centered on the monkey head 
And what I want to do is get the, the monkey head the same size in the frame. So I'll drag it up a little bit. And that looks okay to me. Let's just quickly compare. So the monkey head looks about the same in frame one as in frame 100. Maybe it's a little bit smaller in frame one, so I'll zoom out a little bit more. And I'll rotate it on the x-axis just so it's a little bit the same way. There we go. So I have my effect. Let's go ahead and go back to frame zero. And let's play the effect. This is known as the Alfred Hitchcock effect. What I'll do is I'll put a link. I don't want to put any video from copyrighted content uh, in this video. So I'll link to an example of this effect as it was used in Steven Spielberg's Jaws movie. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Okay, so if you played it in reverse, what I'll do is I'll go to frame 100 and I'll play it in reverse. It looks interesting. It's not quite perfect because the camera does arch a little bit because I didn't have it perfectly straight, but you get the idea. Camera tip number five, turning your camera into a 2D or orthographic camera. What does this mean? Well, let's say you want to make something that is not 3D. You've made a scene, but maybe you have entirely 2D objects, or the look you're going for is something like an old classic 2D video game, or maybe something like South Park. Well, you can change your camera to not act like a 3D camera. In other words, you can make something that looks two-dimensional and will behave two-dimensional entirely. The creators of South Park actually do use a 3D program, Maya, to make South Park these days. So this is kind of what they do, at least as far as I know. Let's go ahead and select our camera. And with the camera selected, you can go over to the properties window and there will be, with the camera selected, a camera tab that you can select. By default, Cameras are perspective. That means you can have different camera lenses. In other words, you can change the focal length. And if you press zero on your numpad, or if you're emulating numpad, you can press zero on your number row, you will see your scene like you normally would in real life. Well, if you change the lens to an orthographic lens, everything becomes sort of two-dimensional. If you're familiar with, with what orthographic means, you'll know that it's sort of like one of those SimCity or Warcraft kind of uh, ways of looking at the world. Things that are farther away do not look smaller. Um, and it just sort of makes it like a flat 3D kind of a view where faraway objects are not smaller like they would be if you were actually looking at something that was farther away. This is great, but if I wanna go ahead and make something that looks more like a two-dimensional scene, I'll press zero to break out of my camera. You'll see that with orthographic camera, the camera now looks really big, and that's because it does have a field of view. It's not a field of view, though. It's not like a lens field of view. It's a scale, it's an orthographic scale. And you can see that slider right below the term orthographic uh, when you have orthographic selected. When it's perspective, you have a focal length, like on a lens. Um, and I can change the scale, so if I press zero to go back into my camera, I can change the size of things. If I want to zoom, zoom in or zoom out, uh, if that's even the correct term, uh, you can do that. But let's go ahead and break out of the camera. I'll press uh, actually Alt-R on my keyboard. With the camera selected, if I press Alt-R, it'll clear the rotation of the camera. So now, if I press zero, I'm looking back through my camera. And with the camera selected, that means I've right-clicked on the edge of it. I can grab the camera as I'm looking through it, and I'll see if I can find my uh, cube. And let's say my cube was my character, uh, if I was doing something like a fake um, cutout animation, sort of in the style of South Park. I could scale all my objects down to be smaller, and if I want them to be smaller in the scene, or I could make the orthographic scale of my camera larger, so I could just make it larger and make everything else smaller. Note that, of course, what I'll do actually is I'll split this view in two and break out of the camera in this view. Note that, of course, if you uh, have objects farther away uh, in this view, as I explained a second ago, that I'll go ahead and duplicate the cube, Shift D, and I'll move that one to the side. Notice that when I drag this cube down, it does not get smaller um, through the camera lens. And it actually just disappeared there because all cameras, as does your viewport, they have a cutoff. That means you can't see objects farther away. Camera tip number six, the rule of thirds. If you've ever taken a course in digital photography or you're just interested in photography in general, you'll know what the rule of thirds is. Basically, on your viewfinder of your camera, if you overlay a tic-tac-toe grid pattern, in other words, two lines, both horizontally and vertically, and you align subject matter in your photographs to those lines or where those lines 
across, you'll get a better, more visually pleasing photograph. We can also add those grid lines to help you make more visually pleasing photographs or video to the viewport of your camera in Blender. If I press zero on my numpad or go down to view and camera to view through my camera's uh, lens and you right click on the edge of your camera to select it, I now under the camera tab in my properties window, of course you can only get to this tab if you have the camera selected, in the display section we have composition guides. I can enable the rule of thirds grid lines, and they're very, very faint. You probably can't even see them on YouTube unless you're watching this in 1440p. There's a line right there going across, another one right there, and there, and there. And so basically, if I put subject matter in my photos, either there, or there, or there, or there, let's say it's somebody's eye, if I'm taking a portrait photograph, and someone's eye is right there, or the horizon line there or there, it'll be a more visually pleasing photograph. So that's the rule of thirds. And of course in Blender you can have multiple composition lines uh, visible at the same time. So if I want to have a center line as well, I can do that. And so now I have center lines both horizontally and vertically, and I can have the golden triangle A and B visible at the same time. I'm not going to be talking about what those are in this video though. That's going to be it for tip number six. Camera tip seven safe areas. Not all televisions are created equal, but all televisions cut a little bit off the edges of the picture that you put on them. Computer monitors don't usually do this, but TVs do, especially old CRT tube televisions. They would cut a lot off of the edges of the television, and therefore it became common practice, it's sensible practice, to not put important information, like important characters or images, or especially text, or motion graphics at the edges of your screen. In most video editing programs, they have safe areas already in the viewport when you're looking at a video, and you can have those same margins that let you know when you're getting too close to the edge when you're viewing your scene through your camera's viewport. Let's go ahead and get rid of the splash screen and select the camera and go to view camera to look through the camera. And if I go over here to the properties window, if I have the camera selected and I go to the camera tab, I now have a section called safe areas. And if I just check this checkbox, it gives me the default safe areas for the um, aspect ratio and the resolution of the camera that I currently have set up. If you can't see them right now, it's because you're watching this video at a low resolution. In fact, you probably can't see them unless you're watching this video in 1440p on YouTube. There are very, very faint guidelines. In fact, there's two box guidelines in dashes around the edges of my uh, viewport edges, and that's great. I can customize them uh, by opening this area up, and I can change the title safe margins, which means that these are places where I should not put titles, text outside of. If, if I adjust these, you can maybe see that I'm really squashing. I now have a safe area for titles that is only in the middle of the screen. Um, if I don't want something that ridiculous, I can change them back. And of course, you can customize these very, very easily. There are two lines, and that's because the other one is for action or things that are important in your scene that you don't really mind if they get cut off, but it's good to not have them cut off at the same time. So there's two uh, ones. You want to be more uh, generous with the amount of margin that you give text on your screen and a little bit less usually with action uh, things on your screen. So that is margins and safe areas in Blender. Camera tip eight, lock camera to view. Out of all the essential camera tips that I've talked about in this video so far, this is the one that you're probably gonna wanna always, always use. Let's say that you are looking through your camera's view. I'll go down to my view menu and select camera, and you realize that your camera isn't properly positioned or rotated, and you wanna change it just a little tiny bit. Well, what you could do is you could split your window in two. You could grab this little cross-hatched area and drag it over and then break out of the camera by pressing zero again. And you could try moving your camera around to get in the exact right position. But that was a much more difficult process than it needed to be because I could just orbit or pan or zoom right from within this viewport. I'll go ahead and make this one a little bit smaller over here so you can see what I mean. What I could do is I could try zooming by scrolling my mouse wheel. Well, that doesn't do what I want it to do, nor does panning. If I try to pan, it just sort of moves the viewport around on my screen. If I try to orbit, it just breaks out of the camera itself. I'll do that again. I'll try orbiting. It's just broken out of the camera and hasn't moved the camera at all. So how do you actually do this? Well, it's actually just a one little checkbox. If I press this little plus up here, I'll 
merge those together again. If I press this little plus up here or press N to bring up this properties panel, there is a handy checkbox. It's called lock camera to view. It's under the view section. And once that is checked, and you go through your camera's viewport, you're gonna notice a red or orange dashed outline around your camera uh, viewport. You'll see that goes away if I don't have it checked. There it is. With this checked, I'll hide it with the N key again. I can now orbit through my camera's view. I can zoom and I can pan, and it actually moves my camera. If I drag this cross this area away, and I press zero to break out of my camera, you can now see with the camera selected, I am actually able to move my camera by orbiting or panning or zooming. It'll actually move the camera. So that's one of the most handy things that you'll almost always wanna have turned on. Camera tip nine, current view to camera. We've all done it. We've all orbited or positioned our viewport to a specific location, looking at our object or scene from an angle, and we wish our camera was right there. Well, this is amazingly easy. You can take the active camera in your scene and position it to very close to how you're looking at your scene through your viewport through any which way with only a few keystrokes. The magic keystroke is Control, Alt, and the zero key on your number pad or the number row if you set your number row to act like your number pad. So Control, Alt, zero. And when you do that, it might not be the exact right cropping, but it will go to the exact same angle that you're looking at your scene from in your viewport. If you don't have a numpad or you don't want to remember the keyboard shortcuts, let's go ahead and change the view to a different view. You can also go to the view menu and align view and align active camera to view. So it's control, alt, number pad, zero. And that does it. Camera tip 10, setting the active camera. Let's say that you have a scene that you've animated and you wanna shoot it from multiple angles so you have multiple cameras in your scene. Or let's say you've modeled a 3D object that you want several different renders of from different angles and so you wanna press F12 and know which camera will be rendered out. Well, you can set the active camera in your scene if you have multiple cameras, and that will let you know which camera will be the one that you will view through when you press zero on your number pad, or the one that'll render out when you press F12 or the render button. Let's go ahead and create multiple cameras in my scene. I only have one, the default one right now. If I press Shift D on my keyboard with it selected, I'll duplicate it, and maybe I'll rotate it on the Z axis to maybe point in about the right direction hopefully, but I can't tell because if I press the zero key on my number pad or go down to the view and camera, it goes through the original camera. And that's because it's the active camera. You can actually tell a difference in your viewport by just looking at the two cameras. One of them has a black filled triangle above it and the other is hollow. The one with the black filled triangle is the default camera. In fact, if you go up to the top of your properties uh, window to the scene tab, you'll see the active or the camera of the scene is just my first camera. If I click in here, it'll list the cameras in my scene and the second one by default is called camera.001. If I change that now, you'll notice that the default or the active camera changes to this one. So if I press that one, yeah, I've got my scene from a different angle, but how can I switch those easily? Well. There's a keyboard shortcut to it. If I have a camera selected that I want to make the active camera, I can press Control zero, and the zero has to be the zero on my number pad or on your number row, if you have your number row set to act like your number pad, and it'll change that camera to the active camera, and it'll actually go into that camera's view. So again, if I press zero to break out of that camera, you'll now see that it is the active camera. It has the black fill triangle. If I want to make this camera now the active camera, I can press Control number pad zero, it'll switch that camera to be the active camera, and we can see that up here, it now says it took actually a second there, camera.001, and it is now the active camera with the filled triangle. Camera tip 11, well actually there is no number 11 in this video, but if you wanna check out how to create a focus blur effect, that's tutorial number 45 in this video series, I'll put a link to that on the screen and in the description below, but that's gonna be it for this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.